Welcome back, Lion Golf Academy members and guests. Today we have something extraordinary in store for you. Get ready for an in-depth analysis of the phenomenal swing of Cassandra Meyer. Imagine a swing that defies the laws of physics, propelling the ball further than most men can even dream of. Well, that's exactly what Cassandra Meyer brings to the game. In this video, I'll dissect every aspect of her remarkable swing, uncovering the secrets behind her incredible power and distance. From the moment Cassandra addresses the ball to the explosive release of her club, every motion is a symphony of technique and athleticism. I'll break it down step by step and help you understand how she generates such incredible force. But it's not just raw power that sets Cassandra apart, it's the finesse and control she exhibits with every shot. So grab your notepads and prepare to be amazed by the precision and power of Cassandra Meyer's golf swing. Cassandra Meyer has pound for pound one of the strongest swings in golf currently hits the ball over 350 yards I'm gonna show you a couple reasons why she can do this and how you can implement this type of setup and why simple setup implementations can help free your motions to deliver power that you didn't even know was there. Setup is a big thing. If you take a look at the right side of the screen, we have that setup line right through her spine angle. Now you notice this is something that I keep encouraging amateurs to do is make sure that club shaft is matching your spine angle at all times because all that does is connect your center of your chest to your hands and your hands to your club head. So essentially the club head is now connected to your spine. If you can truly rotate around that spine angle and shift your weight correctly, man, you are looking for increased launch angle, decreased spin, and a lot of fun. But let's take a look at the left side and the right side here. We have the lower brace line, the upper brace line, the spine angle line, and we have a back brace line because she does lose some posture. And we'll talk about why and what she has worked on in the past to help it. So after this analysis, make sure you stick around at the very end of the video. I'll show you before and after of what she tried to accomplish in her setup. And it's really helping her prolong her body and her swing for a longer time. So the right side of the screen, we have that right hip line. That's going to show you the rotation, any weight shift. Obviously, this is that center spine angle line, connection line that I like to call it. And this is the impact line. Now, that, that's a huge power V that she's already established. So nice wide stance, wider than shoulders. This is to promote use of her lower body, her thighs, as she drives up into the golf ball and delivers ground force that she creates. As she takes that club back, we can see those hands just riding up that lower plane line. Club face is slightly below that plane line, and she's starting to roll her hands open because that club face is opening to her spine angle. There is not a one-all way to do this. We see many great players hood the club, keep the club face square, open the club face. It's whatever is built for the body. Now, there's some advantages of opening this club face. It allows her to turn more. Some disadvantages, if you don't know what you're doing, your arms and hands will take over and you will start reducing your turn. So it's a very hard motion to master, but she does a wonderful job. Same position on the right side of the screen. We're going to take a look at same position on the right hand of the screen. We're just going to take a look at that nice one piece wide takeaway. Look at those arms, how they're just staying connected and out in front of her chest. So if we draw that triangle that I always love to draw, we can easily see that everything is not broken away. There is some rolling of the forearms, as we see on the left side of the screen, to open up the club face. But again, it's not sacrificing turn. It's not sacrificing rotation. So she is good to go. Look at how wide that is. Width is your best friend. Now, obviously, you need flexibility. So if you cannot get wide, you are probably not flexible enough so let's go back to the left side of the screen as we go back further we can see that club head is now on that lower plane line it's going to raise to that upper plane line as she lifts her arms up now if you notice her head does fall down slightly and that is because she is starting to load up her power on her toes. Essentially, she's going to dip and jump back up. And this is a move that few people can do. I'd like to see more people do it. It does replicate an athletic motion. As she gets to the top of the swing, because of that head dipping down, it's going to increase her tilt slightly because her whole weighting is going towards her toes. And as a result, we see those hands getting slightly higher than where they need to be. But again, this is a secondary position. As long as you're rotating around this spine angle line, you're doing good. And you can see she is perfectly right in the middle of her body. We can see on the right side of the screen, as we get to the top position, she has rotated perfectly around that spine angle line. She's maintaining that position while she is turning around her right hip. You can actually see the right hip just turned. She's keeping her posture the same. That bend 
at the left side of the screen when she started is now the bend on the right side of the screen as she turned around her spine angle. And you can see some slight knee bending on the left side and the right side because of that turning. She's starting to squat. She's going to go down and back up through impact. But look at how much turn she does establish. Again, you'll notice that a lot of these long drivers, they get that club way past parallel. But in relation to their turn, look at their turn. So that club is not even perpendicular to that turn. This is something that you need to learn as, a, as an amateur is do not get that club to parallel unless you can turn 120 to 130 degrees with your shoulders while you maintain a pretty tight hip turn. That's a lot of X factor she is generating and that is where she gets a lot of this whipping going through while she's driving down and up. So not only is she getting rotation through the ball, but she's going to go down and up. She's essentially going to jump up into the golf ball while she rotates. Incredibly hard to do, and only a few people can do it. And as far as I know, she can probably hit it than most of us watching this, unless you hit a couple cart pass. Then you might get her. So now we're going to transition. The transition on the left side looks pretty simple. We're going to drop those arms down to that lower plane line. Here, it's a little steep. So this is where we're starting to see some posture loss because she is very much on her toes so she counteracts that by a couple of ways and from the front view you'll be able to see how she counteracts that the most but look at that we're already starting to move closer to the golf ball we can see that happening on her backswing but more so she transitions so she is turning a lot her hands are trying to get to that lower plane line pretty quickly they do a pretty good job here club is falling on that plane line ideally it would like to be close to that plane line but because she crashes into the golf ball and runs out of room what that does is going to push your hands a little bit outside further away from you because you're starting to crash now when you push your hands a little further away from you what happens to that club head it starts to get laid off so she was slightly steep and that little action of her pushing in starts to lay the club off and you can see it falls below her plane line now so it goes from slightly steep to slightly flat so some of this is by design some of this is just what happens as she learns how to hit the golf ball so if you were finding yourself in a similar position where you're crashing into the golf ball that affects your plane your body is going to counteract that by learning new arm positions to make it work. So this is one area that, let's say I was working with her, I would focus on keeping that spine angle straighter by keeping a back brace line on the target so she doesn't have to manipulate that much. But we don't know about her consistency issues. She could just have just dialed this in to be routine. Let's take a look at the right side. As we come on through, she's going to drive her left side into that target line, but she's not going to lean there. She's still on her spine angle. Her head just basically stays like it's stuck there as she's whipping around. So a lot of whipping motion. We're going to get to about the same position here. So knee is on that impact line, so it's definitely driving. You can see the weight getting pushed from her right toe and she's receiving it with her left toe which is very interesting most long drivers are pushing with their right toe receiving with their left heel which allows them to push in that back brace line on the left side of the screen here and that will allow her to maintain posture so she can deliver more but this works because she hangs back and she comes on through comes on through on the left side we can see that rotation and one thing you'll notice is her club face is still open here her club face is just about open to her spine so she's not getting her hands manipulating that club head all she's doing is allowing her body to help square that club head for her her arms and hands aren't doing much they're just holding on to that angle as long as she can she's driving that force look at her left heel coming up at impact and right at impact you can see if we were to draw another line here that's her new impact line so she has a slight loss of posture now that's going to crunch her on the right side on the right side of the screen to counteract the slight crunching into the golf ball her arms have to break a little bit that left arm kind of bending to help with that lack of room that she has. So great impact position here. What we can tell again is look at where her hands are connected to her chest right at impact. The golf ball is just being struck here. Here is a new spine angle so you can see how much she has changed her dynamic loft at impact. We did this by maintaining our head position while our lower body has driven under and towards the target. So how do we get this position? How do you get this position? Is you focus on keeping your head where it was and you drive your lower body into it now if you can drive your lower body like her you'll probably get an extra 30 to 40 yards right away but it is very hard to do very hard on the lower back and we can see here heels 
are up in the air, heels are up in the air. So there's a lot of rotation, a lot of whipping around while she is driving into the golf ball. And let's back it up slightly on this left side here. Watch the leg action. So the legs stay compressed and right before impact. Watch that leg action. There goes that jump. So this is a motion that most of us don't do because we're not gifted enough to do it. We're not strong enough to do it while we maintain that posture. A really good thing that she does is look at her right shoulder. It doesn't crunch down. It doesn't tilt. It doesn't dip. It just stays true to that spine angle. And right at impact, we can see her whole body is facing the target. The most impressive part is after impact, we can see her hands are just catching up with the front of her chest, so her hands are not out racing her turn, which is another thing that us amateurs struggle with because we don't have the range of motion, we don't have the flexibility, and we have to rely upon our flimsy hands and arms to do the work. Unless you can eat that spinach meat like Popeye, it's not going to work for you. At release point, you can see those hands go up to the top plane line and just wrap right around and look at that follow through. Look at where this club is. It's still matching her spine angle. So very little manipulation. The one manipulation I see is caused by her posture loss, but that all has to do with how she drives energy from her small frame into that golf ball. And that is purely a lower body action. Right side of the screen, we can still see that rotation. Look at those. There we go. Look at that little triangle again, still connected. Look at the triangle again, still connected. Very few people in the world can do this. And their triangle just gets broken down, but it's doesn't matter the golf ball is probably 100 yards in the air by now and you can see that left hip never crosses into that impact line it just keeps turning around if anything right shoulder is at impact line and left foot is at impact line so look at all that rotation now i want to show you one thing that i think she's worked on and recognized to help her protect her lower back and this is the one area i really want you amateurs to focus on because this is the biggest mistake i see almost everybody do when they first start the club is trying to cheat the system by getting their hands ahead at setup. Okay, so we have pre and after. Pre on the left side, after on the right side. So pre on the left side, we can see some tilting action going on in terms of her hands connected to her center of her chest. So if we draw her center of her chest through her hands and keep that on a straight line, you can see how her hands and center of the chest are way too far ahead of the golf ball versus after where her hands go through the chest and down to the golf ball. It might not look like a big change, but it does affect a lot of things, specifically the longevity of your swing and the motions you have to do to counteract this. We can see on the right side, it's also been weaker grip versus the left side. That's also by design. When you are getting your hands ahead, you are required to tilt a little bit more to keep those hands ahead. And if you release a club face, it's very hard. So you snap hook it. So she built a strong grip to hold the club head there and get her upper body to tilt under and keep that club face square. With the one on the right side, you don't need a stronger grip because now you are truly connected. So you can do a little bit more rotation and less tilting. So why is that important? It protects the lower back and the longevity of your swing. So let's just go straight to the top of the swing and let's look at some of these changes here and what it will do for your impact. So because of the weaker grip, we can actually turn a little bit more. And if you don't believe me, give it a try. Try and get a super strong grip and turn as much as you can. Then weaken your grip, start from beginning, turn as much as you can. The, an the hands and arms can free up, they can roll over and they will allow you to turn more. So we see a bigger x factor here at the top of her swing it's not as much turn now that's going to affect her length of arc you can see here at the top of the swing on the left side versus the top of the swing on the right side and we haven't manipulated our body turn to arm ratio if that makes sense so we've just got there by having more turn we didn't get there by just moving our hands and arms back now once we go down through this is where all the changes will make a big difference so we can see in the similar position here you can see how much flatter this club is versus here it's going through the center of her head versus the center of her neck now that's a big thing because once you get down to here there's only one way to help that motion is we start having to tilt more what we're going to do is draw a line where her shoulder tilt is relative to where she was in the start so that was where she was in the start versus where it is now and we can see a little bit of separation in that little area there once we get down to impact we can do the same sort of thing here we can see that the shoulder tilt is less because this angle between these two lines is less than this angle between these two lines but that doesn't mean it's over yet post swing is where we'll see this thing really tilt under this is right when the club is just past parallel we can see so much more tilting going on here versus here 
is not as much tilting. Now, again, it doesn't look like much, but what you notice as well is the arch on her back. Look how much weight is behind here versus here. So if we draw a center of the head straight down versus the center of the head straight down, it's closer to the center. It's closer to her body mass. So that means there's less pressure on this lower back. If you were to continue with this swing, it would last about another 10 years before age kicks in, before wear and tear wears down on you. At least this one, you might get 15 years out of this swing. And it all really matters for the prime of your life if you really want to make as much money as you can doing what she does. So I hope that kind of gives you an idea of what your setup should be like. You always want to promote a neutral setup neutral setups your friend it's not going to change things right away it might actually make your swing worse so when you watch these take this for a grain of salt try and apply some of it to you but you should always be working with the golf coach specifically pj or lpga coach because they are educated and they can help you out and address your issues but i hope you like this I hope you enjoyed seeing somebody who is pound for pound in my opinion the longest hitter on earth if you like this, hit that like and subscribe, help the channel grow. And if you have a buddy in your foursome that thinks he can hit it far, share this video with him and show them how somebody really hits it far. Until next time, Ferris and Greens.